Today I will show you how to install Linux Mint on this old PC. We will make a bootable image with Etcher and install it. Have you tried turning it off and on again? Alright, I have this HP Elite Book. I think it's about 8-9 years old and it's been decommissioned from where I work. So, we will try to install Linux Mint on it. I think it's an EliteBook 840G3. So, it's not ancient, but it's not the best either. So, it's probably perfect for Mint. Let's grab this 16GB stick and install an ISO image on it. Okay, so we are on my desktop computer. I will format this USB stick and well, you can just go with the default FAT32 and default allocation size and this size will depend a bit on how large of a USB media you have. So let's format this one. The label doesn't matter. I have mine set to mint and you only need 4 gigabytes for this ISO file but this is 16. I will open a web browser and let's go to Balena Etcher, which actually is the recommended ISO program from Linux Mint. So they have tested it, it works great. The Linux Mint ISO files with this image program. So go to balenaetcher.io and here we can see it's a quite simple page and it's a quite simple program also so it's very intuitive to use and if we actually go to linuxmint.com we can here see on the download page Linux Mint 22 recommended and there are some different versions the cinnamon one is the one with the most features on and if you scroll down a bit you also get on some more lightweight installations if we check here on the documentation under create the bootable media, we can actually see that they are recommending download Etcher, install it and run it. So that's exactly what we are going to do. And we will download the Cinnamon edition meanwhile. So here we can see it's about 3 gigabytes. And I will choose a mirror that's more close to me. I'm in Sweden, so let's speed things up here. Okay, we got the ISO file. And let's download Etcher. And you can choose the OS you are on and just hit download. And here it's about 174 megabytes for Windows. Alright, so I will download Etcher for Windows, the x64 installer, and let's open it up. And here we can see we have to choose a file, and I will choose the ISO file that we downloaded from the Linux Mint. And then you select the storage that you want to put the ISO file on, and you just hit flash. Simple as that, let's speed things up. We have 20x speed here. And we can see it's flashing about 20 megabytes per second and also doing a validation and it's complete. So I will pull out the USB media and let's hook it up to the HP Elite Book. And when you power on, you can go into a boot menu with F9 in this particular PC. It's usually uh, function keys, F1 to F12, it could be escape, it could be delete. If you don't know, look in the manual for your PC, but here it's F9. So I will choose the USB stick in the boot menu. And uh, let's see if this works. We can see, yeah, we actually have an option here. Start Linux Mint, compatibility mode, OEM, boot from next volume, but we will go with the top value here. And once again, let's speed things up a bit. So this is actually a live bootable image. And that means we actually have a fully functional operating system now. So 
You can you have this USB stick in your pocket and always have Linux Mint with you. But of course, if you do any changes, they won't be persistent to the OS. So this is just for maybe if you want to check it out a bit, Linux Mint, before installing it. Or have a portable version of a Linux Mint with you. And we can see we can open file Firefox, no problem at all. And let's see, we can actually have, yeah, we have internet connectivity, we can use Firefox and you can use other apps, terminal, LibreOffice, just from this stick. But here in the top left, we can see there is actually an icon for install Linux Mint permanently on your PC. So of course we are going to open up this link. Seems to take a while, but yeah, here we are now at the install GUI for Linux Mint. So let's choose the language. I will stick to English and we can choose keyboard layout. And my keyboard layout is actually Swedish, believe it or not. I will go with ordinary Swedish, no other type or flavor of Swedish hit continue and here it asked, asks us to install me multimedia codecs we are of course going to do that to have a smoother playback for multimedia and that is one of the good things with uh, Linux Mint all the drivers are pretty much in the kernel OS so you don't need that much third-party drivers Okay, so the installer actually noticed that we have Windows on this hard drive and I don't want any dual boot or anything like that. I want Linux on the whole disk. So that is what we are going to choose here. Erase disk and install Linux. And of course, be very, very careful if you have any data that you actually need. You can uh, then maybe make a backup or copy it to another drive. But yeah. I will go about and continue here and it warns you this will destroy all data on any partitions so be very careful. After that it jumps directly to the time zone I will select. Yeah I'm selecting Oslo but that's pretty much where I'm at. And here I will fill in name, computer name, username and password. Once again, let's speed things up. This is 50x this time, not just to not waste your guys' time. But here it just tells us a bit about the OS that you can find help, it reboots, and then we are actually all done. We are inside a permanent version of Linux Mint. And this is the first thing you see, it's a welcome screen where it explains how you can change desktop colors, take some snapshots, the driver manager and how to update your packages. So we can actually change theme without paying a lot of dollars like in Windows. Then you have to activate to change your theme. And here is a bit of a doc documentation and also where you can get help. Hope you guys liked this video and subscribe for more videos like this. See you next time. Bye bye.